Me coding is kind of like... Imagine a teenager that publishes their first app when they're 15 and participates in multiple hackathons before even finishing high school. Well, that was the opposite of me. I sucked at coding. I barely even programmed at all up until college. And actually, whenever I did try coding in the beginning, I didn't like it or found it interesting. That's why when I went to college, I did not pursue computer science up until my very last year, when I realized that software engineers make a lot of money while still maintaining a regular 9 to 5 schedule. During college, I've done some math and physics classes which I was pretty much average in. I know this sounds super naive, but I thought that you just graduate and get a job. Before my last year, I heard about the concept of internships for the first time and that they can pay pretty well for software engineers, so I've decided to delay my graduation and transition into computer science. In the following year, I completed all the core CS classes from intro to programming with Python to data structures and algorithms and discrete math and introduction to operating systems. This is also where I started preparing for internships. It was already difficult to learn how to interview and solve the lead code questions, but what really took the wind out of my sails was basically never hearing back from hundreds of applications. The funny thing is that I actually thought that the resume I had written was good. But out of desperation, I started researching into how I can improve my resume and at the same time started reaching out to random strangers on LinkedIn, hoping that someone would be kind enough to help me out. Doing both of these ended up being crucial. While the vast majority of people I reached out to never replied, those who did were actually helpful. They were happy to refer me and give me pointers. Something I've heard way long ago from my teacher during middle school is that people will feel compelled to help you when you deeply care about something and respectfully ask and follow up about it, which is also something I've later heard Dumbledore say. Help will always be given at Hogwarts, Harry, to those who ask for it. Also, after applying with my revised resume, I've actually heard back from a few companies and that felt really good. I kept practicing hard every day for lead code. I ended up completely failing the first step with Stripe, but I was able to pass the first step with Amazon. And as I did, I doubled down and tried to put in as many hours as I humanly could each day for preparation. And eventually, I cleared all the steps and got the offer which felt truly euphoric. It was a moment of sheer happiness and disbelief. That summer, I ended up interning at one of the teams in Seattle working on Alexa, the smart home device, and the internship was actually quite rough. Especially in the beginning, I was bad at understanding what I needed to do, and I was bad at communicating that. My project was building a pipeline that transfers data from an Elasticsearch cluster, which you can think of as a database that's optimized for searches of long text, to S3, which is Amazon's object storage. Things were not going smoothly, which made me stress out and work 11 to 12 hours a day. In retrospect, I was actually doing pretty okay, but back then it felt like I was doing bad while others were cruising along with their projects. I've learned an important lesson that, especially early on in a new job, you have to ask a lot of questions and clarify what you don't know rather than trying to figure out things on your own. With experience, I can say that it's perfectly fine for a new hire or an intern to ask a lot of questions and you're actually expected to reach out to teammates and ask for help. After the internship, it was so much easier to actually get responses and I didn't need to be so resourceful. I would pretty consistently hear back from applications and I had multiple interviews set up with Roblox, Palantir, Orchard, which is a real estate startup, and Clearstreet, which is a fintech startup, all for an entry-level position for after graduating. I failed the interviews with the first three companies, which made me feel like I just got lucky with Amazon. However, these failures actually helped me with getting more interviewing experience, and so I ended up doing really well in the interviews with Clearstreet, and I ended up receiving an offer from them. I was super happy. The offer was great, and I was so excited to relocate to New York City. Later that year, after graduating, I bought a one-way ticket from Fairfax in Northern Virginia, where I went to college to, to the Big Apple. The time at ClearSuite was challenging and exciting. I ended up learning a lot about CICD and how code actually runs in production. I learned programming languages like Go and Python, 
and developing in a microservice architecture versus a monolith. It was also the first time I got to experience living as an adult on my own, getting a paycheck, allocating budget for rent and other expenses, saving and investing in the stock market, and working from those high rises, including the World Trade Center that I always wanted to feel like how it would be. Here, I slowly started transforming from a student that barely coded in his life into a pretty okay software engineer. I started working on larger projects and even led some of them. I still made rookie mistakes like not testing enough, but these were all learnings I took with me to my next stop. In the past year, I've been working at JustWorks, and now I'm no longer an entry-level engineer, but a mid-level. Looking back, it's kind of hard to believe. I had to go above and beyond just to get an interview for an internship, and I would stress out every day analyzing each possible way my answer could have been interpreted by the interviewer, and now I'm getting to mentor teammates and take lead on more and larger projects. The truth to the matter is, if you're in college or if you're trying to transition into software engineering later in life after graduating, you will get there. Reach out to engineers on LinkedIn, get your resume checked and revise it, keep preparing for interviews and applying every day. It's difficult in the beginning, but it gets so much better after your first experience. After you cross that initial barrier, only then you will actually feel and be part of the demand for engineers and the high compensation that everyone is talking about. On the contrary to what you might think, you don't need to be gifted or had started programming early in life to become a good software engineer. Like with any other skill, you get better at coding the more you consistently practice. And that brings us to today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something from my experience. And I'll see you next time. Bye.